Are you looking for a camper that will sleep four or more comfortably? Well, stay tuned because I think I might have the perfect camper for you. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Paul Chamberlain, the Air Force guy here at Campers Inn in Jacksonville, Florida. Hey, if this is the first time you're watching our channel, please do subscribe, like, and comment on this video. Let us know if there's something in particular you'd like us to review for you as well. But today, I'm excited to bring you by Flagstaff. This is their 27BH, meaning bunkhouse, WS. You're gonna be quite happy with the fact that this one here, because of the layout, you could sleep between six to eight people. Although you don't have to have that many people to sleep. If you'd rather, the less the better. So what you're gonna love about this is the fact that you had this molded cap here, it's three quarter cap, and you have an actual automotive glass windshield. And we'll show you what that looks like from the inside. And you can see you have your nice little lighting on the front. So if you need to light up the front, please don't annoy your neighbors if you have neighbors across from you, because that light is bright, but it is nice when you have to access this area. Now you're gonna notice, like most campers, it's gonna come with the electric tongue jack. Now this particular one, they are come standard with the 30 pound LP tanks. Now if you wanted to, you could go ahead and put them down to a 20 pound tank. If that's something you wanted to do, you could do that. Of course, you're gonna have the batteries on the front. This has solar package on it. So they've made it easy for you to go ahead and turn on and off this docking. They call it a docking light. This way here, you know, if you're backing up to it at night and so forth, it makes it easier. Or you're out here checking your tanks, whatever the case may be, you wanna be able to see where your camper is, that's helpful. And then of course you do also have a light on your tongue jack, making it easier for when you're hooking up. Now this particular camper, as you're gonna notice, this has the electric stabilizers and that is all controlled right here. So you have one switch that'll control both the front and then you're gonna have one, both sides of the front. And then you have another switch in the back that'll control the back. It is not a leveling system, it is a stabilizing system. So prior to stabilizing, be sure that you level your camper. Now you're gonna love what they've done with this camper. This storage is phenomenal. You see it's a large door. Now what I love about this door is the fact that it has, it has two latches. You know, you've seen other campers, it'll have a large door like this and it'll have just one in the center. The problem with that is then the door tends to bow. You're not gonna have that issue with this one. Now, the other thing you're gonna like is the fact that this tray pulls out on both sides. Now this bag is for your 50 amp cord, so you can put it up that way there, you know, you get mud and everything in it. You're not having to put the mud in here. It's gonna be inside there. This is a little griddle. They have a two burner cooktop, but that way here, they also have a griddle for you that you can take out and utilize that in the event you didn't wanna use the two burner cooktop. So this will also pull out the other side. You're gonna notice it has a little table right here. And what I love about the storage, when you're putting it away inside your storage, it has magnets on that front wall to keep it from moving around. Notice it also has magnets for, this is your handle, so that in the event that you had an issue where the electric wasn't working for your stabilizers, you can manually put them up and down. So let me take you around the other side and show you how this is on the other side as well. Okay, so I'd mentioned this thing will actually pull out this side as well. That way there you have nothing getting trapped in the middle. I mean, that is, pulls out a long way on either side. You're gonna notice this also comes with an inverter. Now, what, what is that inverter gonna operate? That's gonna operate the outlets on either side of your bed. It's gonna operate also the TV. That way there in the event that you need to use, if you're gonna dry camp and you need to use a CPAP, at least you have access to that. I mean, your USB ports are gonna work. You have a 12 volt fridge. This also comes with 200 watt solar on the roof, which is gonna help trickle charge that battery and keep it charged for you. Okay, so when you get to the campground, of course, you've got to hook up. This is where you're gonna connect your 50 amp cord. Then this is, might be a little confusing to some people, but once you get a hang of it, you'll be fine. One is gonna be for your city water inlet. So that's where, where you're hooking up your city water. Next, you're gonna have your tank flush. That's your black tank flush. So when you're emptying your black tank. The third one, this is for when you're winterizing your camper or somebody else is winterizing. If you're gonna hook up cable, you have your cable connections here, whether it's satellite or cable, you're gonna use one or the other. And then I love the fact that they put this light right here. So that way they're in the event. And I know nobody shows up late when you're going camping, but in the event you did, they have the light here for you to do that. Now, alternatively, 
you do not alternatively, but you also have your fresh water tank fill right here. So in the event you're gonna be dry camping, this is where you fill your fresh water tank. Okay, so a couple other features on the back is the fact that it's already wired and framed up there for your Furion rear observation camera. It's not a backup camera, it is a rear observation camera. Benefit there is you can see what's behind you when you're towing it down the road, as well as when you're trying to back up, you can see behind you. So always talk about a rear observation camera versus a backup camera. The other thing you're gonna notice is notice how they have the cover for your spare tire that is mounted onto your rear bumper. Now, I would not recommend you putting your sewer hoses in the rear bumper. They actually have a container down below here, underneath, already mounted there. It's a tube that you're able to put that sewer hose in there. All too often, I see somebody driving down the road and this end cap falls out and then there's your hose dragging down the road. So keep that in mind. This also comes standard. You have your hitch receiver back here. And then of course, lastly is your ladder rated 250 pounds for you to get up on your roof. Make sure you're taking care of your roof, cleaning it on a regular basis, checking and resealing as needed. Now, you're gonna notice when we get inside that there are a lot of other campers that have this floor plan. However, the one thing most of them are lacking is this door, because I know that many of you have things that you wanna store. Now, you could fold this bunk bed up if you wanted to, but you're able to store smaller stuff here and get access it while you're camping. Now, the children are gonna be really excited about this camper because here is the children's outside shower. We have the adult shower inside, and the children, they get their shower right here on the back end, just get themselves a nice little TP and they'll be good to go. So this is your outside kitchen. So I mentioned earlier about the, um, your griddle that was up front. This thing is very, it's just, it's metal, which I like better, but see it locks in and it's very easy when you're pulling it out. You just got to unlock it, you pull it out here. One thing you've got to keep in mind when you're using your outside fridge, I would highly recommend that in the event that you have any frost buildup in here, set some towels in here, unplug this thing, shut it off before you start traveling. Do not let that defrost and have all that water melting out here and ruining your camper. So there are two different LP connections. You have one in the back there for the cooktop, and then there's another one here that you could utilize for that griddle or something else as well. But now also you have a connection for 110. You can connect cable here so that you can hang your TV right there. And that way you can enjoy your entertainment on the outside. Set your keys here. Do not recommend that you're putting anything heavy or the griddle on this. This is just for light items, your phones, you know, you want to charge your phone here or you set some utensils and so forth, just use that for this. That's it. Lastly, you have your outside stereo speakers here. That'll be connected to the stereo on the inside. And that complements your outside entertainment. So now this has the fold out steps for you. Nice thing with this is as you're walking in and out, you're not getting that camper movement like your normal steps. But what I like what they've done is this is a step above. And what I mean by that is take a look at this. See how I'm lifting that? There's no weight on it. It's gonna go ahead and retract and go in here automatically. So this is, it's assisted with a little strut in there and makes it a lot easier. It actually takes effort when you're pulling them out. And then you're gonna notice right here, this is your control. Instead of having the ones where you have the pins, all we're doing, when we pull this out, we put that in, and that's how we adjust our step, our, our step leg, I should say. So you see how it's not adjusted there, you pull it down, and now it is set. You want to make sure that you have it level best with this floor here, and do yourself a favor. If in fact you are leveling the camper, I mean with the tongue jack, make, and you have these steps out, be sure you leave the door open, because otherwise you're running the risk if you were uh, lowering the back, what's going to happen is that's going to raise this and that's going to jam inside the door. So as you come in your camper, this is gonna be the area where you're gonna be checking your tanks, making sure they're good. But it's also turning on your lights. You have an awning light, step light, your interior light, as well as the bedroom light. Next, you have your water pump, water heater, things of that nature. Then you have your awnings and slides. That's all right there. And the nice thing is, once it senses motion, this will light up so you can actually see it. 
I think what you're gonna like even more about it is that you can connect this to your smartphone as long as you have one. Now, I know the ladies are gonna be very pleased with this storage right here. Now, this also has a light. It's a sensor light. The benefit is once it senses motion, it'll turn on. So this is where you can, this could be your pantry, as well as this is where you can hang some things. You can put a broom in here. You can put a vacuum cleaner, whatever you want to put in here. That's the benefit. You're going to notice this floor plan is very similar to others, but it does things a little bit different that you may or may not like. But you're the judge of that. Let us know down below your comments as far as if you like that feature or not. So I know I mentioned to you about how you can load things from the back and this will actually lift up and it actually has a lock right up here where you can lock this and it'll be straight up and down and then when you're ready to use it as a bed you just put it back down what i really like about this and i know some other campers do it some don't but the fact that the actual the curtains here that they put on here they're individual curtains they're not the one size fits all that way there that just creates problems but I think what the children, I, nah, probably the adults more than the children, are going to like that these are soundproof curtains. That way there you will not hear your children snoring while they're up there. So each of the beds has their own window. And by the way, these are frameless windows, which means the windows actually open to the out. They're open from the inside. They're just going to scroll open. The benefit to you there is the fact that if it's raining, you still have the windows open. But you can see how both of these have the USB ports. But right here, there's the 110 outlet. And lastly, they have their own lights that they can control. Good sized bathroom here. And the benefit of the way this door is, I know some people ask, why is there such a gap on the top and the bottom? That allows airflow, which you're gonna want. Now it does have an AC duct already in here and it will have a furnace duct, but check out the floor space in there. And then I like the fact that they have the actual glass shower doors and the way that they lock uh, open. Now, you're going to notice, check out all this counter space and the fact that it's a high-rise faucet. You do have an actual good corner medicine cabinet. Sorry that I lost that there, but check this out. Check out this light. You know, all too often it's too dark at the campground. You don't want to be having the overhead light on. You just leave that on for a nightlight. So another thing is you're going to like, this is an actual porcelain toilet. It's not the plastic toilet. Okay, so great place for you to relax and watch TV. Now, if you don't want the recliners, you can always get rid of these and put a sofa here. Yeah, that's, if you, that's up to you. Uh, but this is a great place to relax. These are manual recliners, but they do come with the heat and they call it a massager. It's more of like a vibration. But uh, little cup holders, little area for you to put your remotes and whatever else you'd like to hide in there. These need to clip uh, back in place there. But cabin space, now so because the fact you have cabinets up here, windows are a little bit smaller, but notice how you have your MCD roller shades here. You have just a shade, that's a dark shade, but then you also have the screen shade. Benefit there is during the day, I can sit there and look out. People, because of the windows being so dark, they, can, they can't see me inside. They might see shadows, but they're not gonna see what's going on in here. Great size uh, dinette booth, in my opinion. Uh, this is over 80 inches in length, but the beauty of it, if it's four of you in the family, you're able to put, you know, let's say you want to play cards one night or some type of game. I know there's always a cheater in the, in the family. So now what you're able to do is put somebody out here and that way there, it makes it harder for somebody to cheat off. So you remember I told you that they, this could sleep uh, up to six to eight people. Where I was coming up with that was you'd have two adults there, you could have two, two adults here, and then you could have four more in the bunks. So that's where I'm coming up with all the, the sleeping arrangements. Now, in order to make this a bed, and what I like about this as a bed, and by the way, I have actually slept on beds like this, is this, you need to just break this down and then cushions go on top. So all you wanna do is unlock this, make sure you step on the legs and it pushes forward. Now all you're doing is setting this in here on this, pulling your, your cushions in and it's set for the bed. When you're done, put the cushions back up, step back on these feet here, this lifts right back up and it comes right back in place. Some people, what they do because they don't want to go through that, maybe they're using that as a bed on a regular basis, they'll take this table since it folds up quite nicely, take it outside, use it, and then they'll just make themselves a nice type of platform that's secure for there and just leave that as a bed. So totally up to you. So now while you're on your recliner, maybe you want to read a book, 
That's why you have this little reading light here. You can shut this light off over top and just use the reading light if you wanted to. So it's a nice little feature. So as you can see, this um, TV entertainment center, of course you do have a fireplace, is directly across from the recliners and the dinette. And by the way, the dinette, let me show you one other feature of why that dinette is a perfect dinette for four people. So it's a rainy day. You want to just sit there and watch a movie. There's four of you. Two people can sit in recliners and it, look at how comfortable it is for me to sit here. The benefit of sitting here is I can set my cell phone down, I can have a beverage, I can have my popcorn here and still enjoy the movie watching it on the TV there. Okay, so you're gonna have, this is a good size refrigerator freezer. This is 12 volt. By the way, you do have solar as I mentioned earlier, but look at how it's cold. We've only had this on for a couple hours and it's already freezing cold in there. Um, three burner cooktop, these things very easily, they fold up like such and then they go back, but nice little burners. You have the lights here, and then, of course, you have your oven, and have the oven light. Now, why would you have an oven light? That way there, you have something cooking in there, you can see what is in there. Now, if you're like me, or most other people, you probably won't use the oven other than storage. Maybe put some bread in there, or cooking utensils, something. So, great setup, though. Now, a couple things you are gonna use in, in this kitchen is this microwave. Okay, and it is a good sized microwave. It is up a little bit high, but because of that, your storage space, you do have additional counter space with this extra top here, and then you have an outlet. So if you're gonna go ahead and put a coffee pot, a toaster oven, things of that nature, you can do that. Um, I have some people, they don't even use their cooktop, so they'll go ahead and just put a nice big uh, cutting board across there, and they'll have some of their utensils there, or I should say coffee maker, things of that nature. Check out the size of this sink. This is something else you are gonna use. It is a huge sink, making it nice and easy for you to go ahead and clean those larger pots and pans. But on top of that, in the event you wanna go ahead and have something small, again, just put a little uh, Tupperware pan in, or dish in there, and you're able to go ahead and use that as your washer, and then you rinse, and it just goes by so much easier. Now, one thing you're gonna notice when you walk in this bedroom is how much more open it feels. And I think it's twofold. Well, there's a couple of things, the reason why it does. One is the fact that you have, your closets are here. So there's your hanging space. And then over here, this could be for clothes. So uh, folded clothes, that is. You can put your hanging stuff over there. So the other reason why this feels so much more open is when you look at this bed, by the way, this is a this is a queen bed. It's an RV queen. However, there's plenty of room for you to put a residential queen in here. But notice how you do not have the cabinets coming down on either side of the bed. So that's the second thing that's making it feel bigger. And the third thing is, of course, that windshield. You're able to look out and see where, you know, in your camping area. So your window's there, you have a side window, you have the window in your door. But notice in your door, and I have just the shade pulled up halfway, you can pull that all the way up so you don't have that light coming in through your door. Okay, so some other features in this uh, bedroom are, in fact, you have the TV here. It's on a little swivel, so you're able to pull that out if you wanted to look at it. Notice how you have the pocket-style door, so it's not in the way when it's open. You do have an exit door here, and it has the same type of steps you had for the, for the other stairs, okay? They just fold right up inside here. And then, additionally, other than when you look at most other campers that are about this length, by the way, the length on this one's a little over 32 feet. This one has a, an actual ducted AC, just like the one in the back. It's the same thing, so that way they're, they're running in the same duct. Um, so, and by the way, contrary to what some people might tell you, this is a 27 bunkhouse does not mean that it is 27 feet long. The actual length on this is 22, uh, 32 feet 10 inches. So do not think that model number is the length or the box size because it doesn't always happen. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. This is the 27 bunkhouse, the model number now, not the length, Flagstaff. Um, what are you thinking? You liking it? By the way, if you haven't, subscribe, like, and comment. Let us know what you're thinking about this floor plan. Your feedback is very cr uh, critical to us doing our job here at Campers Inn. But any questions on this camper or any others, be sure you reach out to Campers Inn and let, let us take care of you. Again, this is Paul Chamberlain, the Air Force guy.
Jacksonville, Florida. Thanks for watching. We'll be back at you again soon. Take care.